Hey, how's it going? It's Nancy Gammon. I was just getting ready to dye some fabric in a really cool, colorful kaleidoscope pattern. Let me show you how it's done. The supply list for this project is a little bit long, so I'll put all the information in the video description and just kind of talk about things casually as we go along. I'm starting with a piece of 100% cotton fabric. It's been soaking in a soda ash solution that I made with one cup of soda ash to one gallon of water, and it's soaked in there for at least 10 minutes. I've got my rubber gloves on and I'm spreading the fabric out onto a plastic covered work surface. The fabric, as I said, is 100% cotton muslin. The dye that I use just works with 100% plant fibers. And my square is about 22 inches. You can go smaller. It doesn't work very well for this technique to go larger. So I'm going to start the fold. It's pretty much like folding a piece of paper to make a snowflake in the winter time when we were kids. So I'm folding it up, folding the square in half, getting my edges lined up here a little better, and folding it in half again. And then I'm going to start folding it into triangles. I'm just going to take this top layer here and align the folded edge. And then pick up this fold and align it to the side. And one more time, taking the fold to create a triangle here. Then I'm going to flip the fabric over and do the same thing on the other side, pulling up the bottom edge lining it to the side again with the folded edge and one more time so now i have a long skinny triangle you can see there's a bunch of folds on one side and just a couple on the other i'm going to roll it keeping these many folds aligned kind of rolling it in a cinnamon roll type of a shape I'm not going to roll it really tight. I want to leave a little room between the fabric as I go. If it's too tight, the fabric acts as a resist and keeps the dye from flowing down in there. So I think got that a little bit tight. I'm going to loosen that up a little bit. Then I'm going to cover it with just a scrap piece of fabric or what I'm using as a used makeup remover towelette that I've run through the laundry. And this is going to keep the powdered dye from leaving any speckles or spots on our project. And I'm going to put it in just a small plastic container and put that in another container just to catch any drips and spills. And then I'm going to cover this with some ice. I've got some ice just from the soda machine, crushed ice. You can use ice cubes or snow. I don't know about ice cream. That might be a different experiment. All right, I've got that kind of mounded on there and covered up. Now I'm going to put on my dust mask and make use of these powdered dyes. What I'm using is a fiber reactive dye. Um, and like I said, it just works with 100% plant fibers. This is a deep purple. Here's a color called Lime Pop. And I usually just use three colors. Um, the ice will break them down into quite a few variations. And then this is a turquoise. You want to use nice quality dye, nice quality fabric. The powdered dye that you get in a box at the grocery store does not work so well. And if you use cheap fabric or um, something other than 100% cotton, you don't get as nice results either.
All right, it's time for the reveal. I let the fabric sit about 22 hours. That seems to be a good length of time to let the color uh, set in permanently without getting muddy. So I'm just going to unfold it here and we'll see what kind of design we've got. This method usually creates a little bit of asymmetry in the center, so it will look like one side should probably on the, be on the top and the other one be on the bottom. And it often makes what looks to me like kind of a lotus flower shape there in the center. So that's what the design looks like. This is going to get quite a bit lighter as we rinse out the extra dye and then when it's dried and pressed. So now it's time to do quite a bit of rinsing to get out any of the extra dye. Using cold water, I'm going to rinse as much dye as I can out of this piece of fabric. My goal is to have the rinse water be clear or as clear as I can get it. I cheated a little bit and chose these particular colors because I knew they would rinse out pretty easily. If I had picked a lot of reds, this would be a much longer video. So colors like green and light blue might only take three or four pans of water, but reds could take 10 or 15. So once I have it rinsed nice and thoroughly and the rinse water is clear, then I'm ready to wash the fabric using a little bit of textile detergent. Using the hottest water that I can get, I'm going to wash the fabric in just a tiny sploosh of textile detergent and then pretend like I'm a washing machine and really agitate the fabric for two or three minutes to let the textile detergent work. This is something a little different than the regular laundry detergent that you buy at the store. Textile detergent is specially designed to release any remaining loose dye from the fabric and get that dye out into the wash water and keep it there so that the color doesn't get back onto the fabric. So you'll notice as I am agitating the fabric that the water is getting darker, it's, the detergent is working and releasing the little bit of leftover extra dye that was in there. So after I've agitated it for two or three minutes, then I'll rinse the textile detergent out and make sure that it's rinsed completely out. I used a little bit more than I probably needed, so I'm going to rinse it twice just to make sure that the fabric is nice and clean and there's no remaining detergent left in it. Now using cold water, I'm going to set the dye with a little bit of dye fixative. This doesn't need to be agitated so much, it mostly just needs to sit for a minute or two. I'll move it around occasionally just to make sure that the fixative is evenly distributed in the water. After this step, the fabrics color fast, so it can be washed in cold water just with regular laundry. I usually wash dyed things with dark or red load just to be safe, but um, cold water wash, tumble dry low, and you're all good. So after the fixative has sat for a couple minutes, then I rinse that out real well to make sure there's none left in the fabric, and that completes the dyeing process. So this is the completed fabric after it's been dried and I pressed it with a nice hot iron. You can see that it's much lighter and brighter than when I originally unfolded it after the dyeing process overnight. Every piece of fabric is a surprise, so just for comparison, here's another piece of fabric that I dyed using the exact same folding technique and the exact same colors, but got different results. Uh, probably a combination of 
how the fabric was rolled up and where the dye powder fell and what concentrations and just how the ice happened to melt that day. So if you don't like your first results, dye, dye again. If you'd like to dye together, dye fabric together, head on over to my website at nancygammon.com where you can see the list of workshops currently available. If you like the idea of hand dyed fabric, but don't have time to make some yourself right now, while you're at my website, you can go shopping. Check out the current product availability. I'll see you next time. Do, 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 do.